everybody, it's Joe Pryor from the Ladies Working Dog Group. Are you feeling stuck with your gun dog training? Trust me, you're not alone and that's exactly why you need to be here. Every week, we'll bring you the best tips and hacks to make training your gun dog easy peasy. We'll keep it straightforward, no fuss, just actionable guidance that you can put straight to use. So let's get started. Hello and welcome to another episode of Found It, Fetched It. This week, we're going to be talking all about the thrill of UK dog sports and why we might want to get involved in it. Joining us for this week's episode is LWDG group expert Gemma Martin. Gemma Martin, I want to know all about this topic. So first of all, tell us about you and tell us about why you can talk to us about this. So I am Gemma, one of the group experts and I run Whistle and Wag Dog Training based in Suffolk. I came across UK dog sports probably Almost two years ago now, I was looking for some sort of form of competition to do with Red, one of my cockers, because he doesn't do tests or anything like that, because he makes noise. So I gave up on any of that and stopped hitting my head against the brick wall because he is what he is and it's not something I'm going to be able to stop. It's excellent at all the gun dog work, but he does occasionally squeak, which is a little bit soul destroying. But anyway, it is what it is. So UK Dog Sport was made by a lady called Wendy Beasley a good few years ago now as a alternative to some of the working trials. So the working trials are where the dogs do the scale fences, they do the massive long senderways, the search squares, the tracking, all of that stuff was doing. And they're usually collies or shepherds or, or types of dogs like that. But Wendy wanted to do a sport that every dog owner could get involved with whatever their breed of dog was. So it's basically based on the working trials, but they've taken out the scale jump because that's quite a big barrier for a lot of dogs because it's very big and a lot of owners don't want their dogs to have to do that. So it's a multidiscipline sport, including obedience work or control work, whatever you want to call it, a bit of agility and a bit of search squares. So when we're talking about trials here now, we're not like field trials for gun dogs. We're on about working trials, which is more for, like you said, for other breeds. Yeah, exactly that. And in the higher levels, they also do man work. So bite work with the dogs. So hence why a lot of shepherds and things are used. Okay. I want to know, you told us a little bit about the history, like where this come from, etc. What's your connection to it? I know you're taking red, but why do you love it so much? I went on one of Wendy's train the trainers courses. So we do run classes on UK dog sports now for various different people to attend with their dogs. I think it's a good activity to do with your gun dog as well. So it gives you another option of something to do because a lot of the skills are transferable. So with red, obviously he's done a lot of gun dog work and within the control section there is sender ways where you have to send your dog to a point and stop them and in the higher levels there's also a redirect to another point which is basically your gun dog skill of sending on a blind stopping redirecting so he's very good with that with your agility stuff a lot of it is again sending the dog away from you over something stopping the other side either joining them or calling them back over the thing so again easily transferred from your gun dog work your heel work, obviously nobody likes heel work, but it usually is something you practice with your gun dog forever, but that's part of it. You do a downstay, again, with your steadiness. The dogs have got to stay in varying degrees of duration for the downstay, some of them out of sight. Also transferable, they've got to do retrieve to hand, which again, hopefully most of our gun dogs can do fairly simply. I'm trying to think what else. A recall, again, nice and simple. And then the search square, most of our dogs are fairly good at hunting for stuff and picking it up and bringing it to us so again they're all skills that we've already taught our dogs it's just applying them in a new way so this must be super fun for like we said for gun dogs but we are always talking about like the multi-purpose dog a lot of us we love our gun dog stuff but we also want to do other stuff like lots of our members might do like agility or man trailing or scent work or a sport like this, do you think that this is something that a lot of people might not be aware of, but they could be doing? Yeah, massively. I don't think there's been much publicity about it. It's only in the last probably six months that they've actually launched a website for UK Dog Sport that sort of describes it to people. And now we are starting to grow a sort of 
bigger community within the sport there's more competitions there's more training happening I think I'm probably one of two people that train it in Suffolk so there aren't that many people training it so it is slowly growing but yeah anyone can get involved regardless of your size of dog regardless of its age regardless of various other factors and actually the skills that you teach within UK dog sports are really handy skills that you can use in day-to-day life as well maybe not so much the search squares unless you lose your keys but yeah a lot of the other stuff is a lot of self-control a lot of just bonding with your dog really and doing something you can both enjoy together yeah because there's always this sort of conversation about is this sport we shouldn't do for example you possibly wouldn't want to teach a gun dog fly ball although they could do it there might be a conflict in the way you want the dog to behave around whatever it is retrieving so do you think this complements rather than compete with what you teach your gun dog yeah as far as going alongside your gun dog work i would say that uk dog sport is a lot more controlled than agility i can't speak for all agility groups but the ones i've been to have all been very noisy very barky very let's go rather than let's control this situation and build some self-control in our dogs they don't want that they want the dogs to run on and be quick as they can whereas the uk dog sport stuff is a lot more controlled and methodical as the levels go up there is a part where you teach your dog to speak which might be a contentious point for some of the gun dog stuff but again nobody's going to force you to teach that if you wanted to do a competition at high level you could do all the other bits and go my dog doesn't speak so you lose five points and that's it so it's not a massively big issue and that's quite nice because I suppose at a higher level, your dog has had more time developing his gun dog training skills. And I think an older dog can take on new stuff and not forget its gun dog stuff far easier than a young dog. Do you know what I mean? So a young dog, you put too much in too quick, it's going to get confused, it's going to get sloppy and messy across all of it. Whereas an older dog, you can ask it to do other stuff without it being too much of an issue to what you taught it originally. Yeah, exactly that. As long as your gun dog work and everything is very solid, it shouldn't be an issue teaching new things. And I know a lot of people that have taught their dog to speak and it's not a problem at all and it's never made noise anywhere. Personally, it's not something I would teach my other cockers to speak because at the moment they are very quiet in their work and it's not something I want to encourage. But That said, it wouldn't put me off competing them in UK dog sports because, like I say, I'm only losing five points for that speak, so it's no big deal. So when it comes to going to compete, what is it? Is the community, the social aspect fun? Do you enjoy that side of it? Yeah, everyone's been super, super welcoming. It's always a good laugh. Nobody really takes themselves too seriously. All of the exercise and things are done on your own with your dog and a judge apart from the downstay where everyone does it together if you have got a dog that's a bit funny about other dogs being around it and stuff it's not a bad sport to get into because most of your competition is done one-on-one with you and your dog and the judge so in that respect it's quite good but yeah everyone's been really supportive it's like I say it's, it's good fun it's just something else to be able to do with your dogs and get out and meet new people yeah, because the reality of it is getting a space in, for example, a field trial is very difficult. Sometimes working tests in certain areas can be incredibly busy and it's very hard to get a spot again. So something like this could just give you another opportunity to enjoy competing with your dog. Yeah, definitely. And what I like about it as well is the competition side of it is more against yourself than other people. So yes, there will be a first, second and third, but you're also trying to achieve a level with your dog so you'll get a pass or you'll get an excellent and their little qualifications you get regardless of where you come against other people so it's just based on your score which I really like so do you think Red loves doing it oh yeah definitely he loves anything where he can show off in front of people so it's perfect (laughs) so for people who are like this thing they're like oh I really might want to get into into this can they contact you to find out more about it? Yeah, so there's stuff on our website about it. I wrote a blog on it not that long ago. And like I said, we have got a couple of courses coming up in September if people wanted to get involved on sort of foundation level and learn what it's all about. 
other than that, there is obviously the new UK Dog Sports website, which explains all the criteria as well. So for somebody wanting to start training it, obviously go along to do training courses, etc. really important. If there's nothing in your area, is there any sort of like massive difference to your gun dog training? Or could you turn up at a training session with a gun dog trained dog? Like, for example, you've done the hot myth handler, your dog has got all those nails. Would you be OK to turn up or would you be like, oh, my God, I've got to learn a whole new range of things? No, like I say, most of the gun dog stuff is fully transferable with a few little tweaks. When I took Red over to see the people that run it initially, I think he did almost every single exercise straight off the bat and they were really impressed with it. We're like, oh, OK, we didn't realise how much sort of gun dog work would transfer. So, yeah, don't be scared to give it a go if your dog's got sort of good foundations or even if they haven't there's loads that you can work on and the foundation levels are really low key so it sets you off really steadily with really achievable things are there any sort of common obstacles that people have when going there like things that maybe you've not trained you talked about the speak is there anything else is there like when you say like obedience and heel work is it like that who like look up at me when you walk type of heel work or is it like our type of heel work ideally it would be the pretty obedience heel work however at the sort of lower ends of it if your dog walks nicely on a lead and doesn't pull you around and sticks with you and isn't gazing at you lovingly you're still going to get decent marks from it they wouldn't expect a cocker to maybe walk around with its head stuck to your hip as they would a shepherd so yeah is it they take into account the breeds and things like that So, yeah, like I say, the the early levels are massively achievable. And even like the downstays that they do, they started off really close by and the duration is lower. And then as you get through the levels, the duration's higher and then you have to go out of sight. So it's quite a nice progression for you and your dog to aim for as well. So what are they retrieving? Is it like a dummy? So the first few levels are an item of your choice. So you can use whatever you want. So it could be a dummy if that's what you've trained your dog with. The later levels, they will use a dumbbell. And sometimes in the higher levels, they will use an item of the judge's choice. And that could be anything from a bottle full of water to a brick or (laughs) something random. In the search square, they're usually day-to-day items. So we've had, what have we had before? A wooden fork that you'd get with a takeaway, a bottle top a bit of carpet, a bit of hose pipe, all sorts of random stuff. And as long as your dog's happy to pick things up, generally most dogs don't struggle with that at all. A bit of practice with picking up random stuff that you've probably told your dog to leave for the last 10 years and they're fine. But the one of the obstacles probably would be delivery to hand, which sometimes a lot of gun dogs struggle with as well. But all of the retrieves and the search square have to be picked up and given to hand. So that's something that's nice to practice across both sports. And I think it is quite good to for a dog to pick up different things because in the state, the reality of it is, if you're in a state where, I don't know, somebody shoots a woodcock, your dog might never have seen a woodcock, but it, it's still got to be retrieved. And I think our dogs can sometimes tend to be like used to buy just getting one thing. Me and you were chatting before this. My dogs pick up dummies, no problem at all. I used Sue's micro dummy. I've put it on Instagram. It's the one that you designed with her. And like literally, Rex blinked it. And I was like, sorry, dog, what did you just do? It literally was because it was smaller. It still made a canvas. It's still pretty much the same thing. But because it was smaller, different shape, he completely ignored it. And I was like, oh, I need to work on that because I've sent you out to retrieve something that, that you're unfamiliar with. And more error of me and the fact that maybe I hadn't introduced it properly to him, etc. But it is good for them to be able to find things. Even if I know some of our group, they've talked about they've lost their phone in a field. The dog's gone and found it for them. Yeah, definitely. The only difference is I send him off with a slightly different search queue because I don't want to set him off hunting in the woods and him bring me back every bit of rubbish that he's found or whatever. But yeah, massively handy. The amount of times I've dropped my keys in the field and the dogs have gone out to find them. It's super helpful having your dogs pick up all sorts of objects, even the remote when I'm being lazy in the living room. <laughs> yeah, I think this it sounds really exciting. Like I'm going to have a look definitely straight after this podcast, what they've got going on in Wales, because I think you're quite right. This gives you something that you can be doing. Like tests and trials are quite separated out. 
if you live in an area where there's not many gendo trainers, like local to me, there's not many gendo trainers whatsoever. This sounds like something that I could go find and just go and have a, a bit more fun with while still not affecting the fundamentals of what I'm trying to teach my dogs. Yeah, definitely. And if anything, it's just building up that bond with your dog whilst practicing a couple of the skills that are the same and not undoing any of the hard work you've put into self-control and, and things like that already. Fabulous. Do you know the website address? Yeah, it is www.ukdogsport.co.uk. And if people want to get in touch with you about the stuff that you've got going on and stuff about the training for this? Yeah, so our website is www.whistleandwag.dog. Wonderful. I'm sure after this podcast, I will speak to Jen, but maybe we can do some type of masterclass on this because we've covered scent work in our masterclasses before and that's been fab and giving people additional options. So maybe we can do something about this. I'm also going to talk to Gemma, she doesn't know yet, about has everybody been seeing on Instagram the dog that can wash his, wash his feet? Have you seen a gem? He literally, he's got like this little bowl, he, d- he puts his back feet in, his front feet in, he grabs his towel, takes it to his owner. I'm like, this is incredible. Can we do this as a masterclass? Has everyone got a bowl like that? Uh, yeah, that might be. I've it's got a, a little bowl sink, like... isn't it? It's a little yeah, sink really... on the side. What could if we work out the logistics? There's got to be a way. But I just thought it was like really thing. We know the dogs can learn so much, but it literally was a case of me thinking, how cool is it that they just know to wash their feet off? You just know though that if you taught that to a cocker, it would be done at lightning speed, and there'd be water everywhere. Yeah, he'd be like dragging the towel through all the rooms, soaking wet, washing his feet on the days you haven't even left the house before you've even gone out. Wash my feet. <laughs> it would be the worst. Thank you very much, Jen, for another fantastic episode. We hope that you've all enjoyed. We love talking to you about loads of different stuff when it comes to our amazing dogs and what they can do. We'd love for you to review. We'd love for you to subscribe. And we'll see you all next week. That's it for today's episode. A massive thank you for tuning in. Don't forget to head over to the LWDG and sign up for our membership. Get access to expert-led training, a wonderfully supportive community, and the resources you need to become a confident and skilled gun dog trainer. Let's take this journey together, because no woman should have to train her gun dog alone. We'll see you all next week. Thank you.